watching the It's Her Time podcast with Cody and Jess. Welcome back to the It's Her Time podcast. My name is Cody Sanders, and today's episode is going to be full of incredible information that you girls are going to definitely want to know. But the guest that I have today is a master at making this type of education super fun. His name is Philip Kelly, and you might know him as Phil's My Pharmacist. He has a huge following on TikTok and on Instagram and YouTube. And I can't wait to get into this episode. It's a great conversation, but it's also going to be very helpful. But before we go into all of that, let's join Jess for a Mixers Girls Say. On today's Mixers Girls Say, I'm already laughing. (laughs) I can't wait for this. I gave us a little preview into this Mixers Girls Say, and we're already so giggly. These are submissions for times that your mouth has betrayed you. (laughs) Which too many times for me, but I can't wait. Some of these I've submissions, witnessed some of yours too. <laughs> yes. It happens. I have, We're like mm. er, turn, turn, and walk away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Once asked a Walmart employee where the teeth soap was, I forgot the word for toothpaste. <laughs> teeth Those soap. times where you're like, I yeah, I'm just gonna leave. Um, okay. I built a giant snowman and my neighbor commented about it while we were walking into church. Unfortunately, my response was, oh, no. With the heat, he lost a ball, so he probably only has two balls left. <laughs> when I was young, meeting the snowballs. Okay. <laughs> the buttons. Yes, all the buttons. Oh, or maybe no. Either either way. Either way. When I was young, I called my dad a dildo, thinking it was a funny (laughs) word. I hope we can get through these. I think this wins for best. Best tell us Tuesday. Okay. (laughs) Oh. Okay, <laughs> having an intimate moment with my husband and I accidentally butt dialed my best friend. Oh my gosh. Did her best friend tell her or did she just see? <laughs> she made a recent call. Oh my gosh. <laughs> or. <laughs> You can do it. You can do it. Hang in there. Okay. <laughs> Ordered an eight inch sirloin instead of an eight ounce. I don't know who blushed more. <laughs> me or the I'm way. Kind of like I'm blushing right now. Like, okay. I'm having secondhand embarrassment. I called <laughs> my boyfriend my ex's name in front of his entire family. <laughs> oh. Oh, you girls. These are hilarious. They're okay. <clears throat> I was making a... I don't even know if I... <laughs> Is it inappropriate? Okay. No. In okay. sixth grade, I yelled orgasm <laughs> instead of organism in my science <laughs> class, answering a teacher's question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was funny. Oh, There's a lot of really good ones. So There's a lot of ones I'm going to go ahead and not share, and we'll just <laughs> laugh about offline. <laughs> But some really, really good submissions. Yeah. Thank you so much for making yes, us thank laugh. you for these Dallas yeah, Tuesdays. Thank you. <laughs> um, let's get into the episode. Let's do it. Mixers is a company made for women by women. Each of our products have been carefully and lovingly crafted to support you in all stages of your life, providing you with the optimal health you deserve. Each ingredient we handpick is 100% all natural, backed by science and chosen specifically to better your life physically, mentally, and hormonally. Each product empowers your body to take charge of its monthly hormonal shift and flows, empowering you to live life to the fullest. Let mixers take care of your needs from sunup to sundown, and you take care of the rest. Check us out at mixers.com, M-I-X-H-E-R-S. I'm so excited because we have an amazing guest on here. So many of you actually are familiar with Philip, the pharmacist. And um, I I put a question out on my Instagram stories the other day because I thought it would be really fun. I love it always when you girls are the ones that send in questions about the things you want me to ask our certain guests. You guys always come up with the best questions. And I was just telling um, Philip that I didn't get any questions from you. All I got was just lots and lots of love for Philip. 
lots of uh, compliments about how much they love your Instagram or your TikTok account and how you present the information. You're kind of like the Bill Nye, the science guy, but <laughs> way cooler, right? And so, <laughs> well, I think that means my job's done. I don't have to put any more content job. out. I've answered all of the questions. Yep. Yep. And, Drop and the all, mic. <laughs> right. Right. And less, much like with my wife, it's time for me to listen. So, you know, rather than tell her more. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. See, see, you're very wise. Very wise. That's great. Well, I'm excited because um, on the It's Her Time podcast, we do cover a lot of different health topics. We love to dive in and have guests like you that are experts. Um, and it sounds like you have like expertise in so many different areas. I think that we could take this podcast episode in so many different fun directions, which I'm totally open for. But one of the things I really want to make sure we do hit home with, so we leave our listeners with like at least something concrete, like a a nugget of good information that they can really benefit from is I do want us to dive a little bit into the MTHFR gene mutation and what that means. And if you can give us some education on all of that, that would be amazing. And then if we've got some time, I think it'd be fun to kind of go into some other fun topics if you if you feel like you want to. But before we go into all of this fun stuff, I want our listeners, because it's I'm just kind of jumped right in. I want you to say hi. Tell us a little bit about you. Why did you become a pharmacist? Whatever it is you want to share. Tell us a little bit more about who you are. Great. Uh, well, so the MTHFR, the, the methylation issue that actually came to me from a friend. So uh, we had infertility issues for years. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so we have a friend. And he uh, he sent me this article about a prescription that's called Deplin, and it's got methylated um, folic acid in it, as well as some methylated vitamin B12. And so the reason why that that whole post came out is he sent me this article because it showed such an improvement on mood. He said, "Is this for real?" And so after I talked to him and his wife for a long time, because they struggled for a long time, mm-hmm. I explained that. You know, it's funny because the, and we'll get to this later because I'll explain why I am, but it's interesting because this actually came about because of infertility is where the whole conversation began with him. Mm -hmm. And then he sent me a couple articles, which I'd already read. And I'm like, holy cow, this is the easiest post in the world. I need content tonight. So I saw it, cut it, put it out. I think the whole thing took me like 15 minutes. Wow. And I didn't realize, I mean, for, you know, you you have this information and you think everybody knows it Mm -hmm. and then you realize that you don't. So, you know. (laughs) So I grew up in Aura. I grew up in Pleasant Grove. So I'm I'm a I'm a Viking there in Utah. There in, in Utah Pleasant Grove, okay. Utah. Mm-hmm. And so I was following the path. My dad owned part of a garage door company that was Lowry Door. So I started working there when I was oh. about 14, 15. Hey, so, I have your garage door on my house. So thank there you. There we go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so about about the time I hit 17, I decided I did not want to do construction anymore. So it was my incentive to start to go to look at college. Um, and so I was trying to figure out which way I wanted to go. Do I want to do, want to become a doctor, which is the easiest way to get married is to tell women that you're going to be a doctor. Like it's, it's, it's the best pickup line. It helps. Yeah. (laughs) At least, you know, early on. But, um, but then I started looking at other professions and I decided that I would move towards pharmacy or physical therapy. Those were the two that I wanted to move towards because I'd been discouraged by a couple of doctor's wives that they said, it sounds really good, but nobody wants to be a doctor's wife for real. Mm-hmm. So I was looking at the two, um, the two possibilities of either being a pharmacist or being a, uh, a physical therapist. And my mom told me the story that when I was born, I had really long fingers. And my okay. grandpa said, he can either play piano or be a pharmacist because he can get the cotton out. So, I mean, still done. Got to go to pharmacy after that. So It was determined for you then. Yeah. You were just genetically <laughs> just... Designed to be Designed. a pharmacist. <laughs> it also helped that chemistry came super easy to me. So, you know, in high school, I didn't try. I mean, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. My goal was to get a B because if yeah. you get a B, the teachers don't pay attention to you. You get a C, they have to pay attention. You get an A, then you move on. So, my goal was a nice solid B. And I graduated with like a 3.1, which was, I mean, right on goal. Great. Yeah. It, it, it exactly. <laughs> and uh, then I went, on a, I went on an LDS mission to Korea. And then I started picking it up really quick and realized that my dad was right the whole time that I hadn't been working very hard in high school. Mm -hmm. And so when I got back, um, we started taking courses and I got into chemistry and chemistry was super easy, Mm -hmm. Uh, super, super easy. Like everything just came really easy. And so after organic chemistry and I'd been offered a job to be the assistant to the professor and all that kind of stuff, I decided I better find something that actually makes money since our poor teachers make no money. Right. 
You know, I mean, honestly, yes. I'm looking at them like, yeah, I can work three times as hard. And at the time, it was projected that pharmacy was going to have shortages for up to about 20 years. We're going to be in the pharmacy. Mm. So, growing up through the 80s in a family that did um, construction, I wanted more security in my life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, yeah. And look, now you, you are able to teach though, in a way you're doing both. You're a pharmacist and through these different platforms and through these podcast episodes, you're a teacher still. So. And I go. love teaching. Like actually that's, I, everybody keeps asking if I could do anything, what would I do? I would actually go back and teach Yeah, because there's something so rewarding to knowing somebody else has information that now that they can share with everybody else. Mm-hmm. And so. Yeah. Create that good r- ripple effect. And I would be somebody that would be so excited to be in your class because just what, how you present things, you do it in a way that you make chemistry fun. You make it easier to understand because it's, you are using, you know, a, it's a talent. It's a huge gift. You're using uh, experience and you're using examples and, and visuals and all of these different things, which I think our most gifted teachers are, they know how to do that. They know how to tap into all of our different ways of being able to learn. And I think that that's something that maybe down the road, you know, can, you could think about that because wow, yeah, you'd be great. It would be super fun, and I got to be honest with you: the teachers, that gift, that that ability to be able to share that information, it's so hard to do. Oh. So, so everybody should be giving their teachers a round of applause because mm-hmm. it's not an easy process, especially when you got what thirty kids in a classroom. The things that you were able to do, like I, mm-hmm. any of the teachers out there, I just want you to know that I totally appreciate what you have yeah. to do because I teach for ninety seconds, and I have to prepare for six hours for that. I can't imagine doing all day long. I know. I know. I actually, when I first uh, started college, I thought that I was going to be a teacher. I, I, I got two years done. I got my associates done in um, early childhood development, taught preschool for a couple of years, and then thought, I can't do this. This is exhausting. Right. I mean, I love the teaching, but I was like all day long. This is exhausting. Like it's just was not for me. So yeah, I appreciate all of those teachers out there. I come from a family of teachers, very much into the education, you know, world and thought that was the world that I wanted to be part of too. But I, in a way I am doing things like this, but not, I, they, I give it up to them because they're incredible. Yeah. Well, like I have to do an hour for a podcast and teach that's I can prepare for that. Yeah. My my 15 second post. Oh, I can get ready for that. But I'm gonna leave those those long days to somebody else. I know. Good for them. And thank thank we are so thankful for them, right? It's just Absolutely. amazing. So yeah. <laughs> well, good. Okay. Well, hey, we're gonna take advantage of this hour of you being able to teach us on some of these things that I know um can feel very complicated. And I feel like, you know. My biggest thing when I'm doing these type of episodes is um, my background is in helping women to be able to understand their health and why we do certain things with nutrition, with lifestyle strategies, so that they can feel empowered and be like their own best health advocates. And I feel like many times people, not just women, but people will go into the medical world, they'll go to their doctor, they'll go to their pharmacist, and they don't know the questions to ask. They just are told this is what they need. This is what they have. And then there's not like a lot of education that follows up all of that. And so I, that's why I love having people like you on here who can be the person that um, is going to take the time and has the expertise and the knowledge to answer some of the questions that we should be asking our doctors and our pharmacists and things like that. Um, so that we can have them, you know, really feel like they're part of our team and not just the ones telling us what to do, but helping us to be able to understand and all of us have, all of us work well together. I call it the black box of, of medicine. So you go in, you give them a problem, they hurry and spit it back out and you go, and you don't understand in between. Right. And I, you'll never be healthy if you're just going in at, for an answer. Like mm-hmm. you shouldn't be going into any place for an answer. You've got to go in there so you know what questions and for education especially with women's health. Women's health is really hard because when you go into a physician's office at that moment, maybe your thyroid looks fine and maybe your, mm-hmm. your progesterone looks fine, estrogen. Honestly, you guys are made to change like every three days. Like, I know. My wife's like, why isn't this working? We're like, it did work. She says, well, it's not working now. I said, you changed. It's not on me. You change every three days. What am I supposed to do? You know? Yeah. But I say, you have to teach women, but also men. We just have a slower cycle. They have to know what they're looking for. And they need to go in and with a little bit of their feet stuck in the mud saying, I know this is the problem. So the more you empower anyone to walk in and say, I know what I've got, what's going on. I know I'm right. 
you're going to see a better response from every type of caretaker out there, whether it's a doctor or a pharmacist. If you go and say, I know this is the problem, they'll take you more serious than if you say, hey, I think I have. At that moment, they're just trying to get back to their busy day. So Right. That's so good. Thank you. That's really great insight. That's true. I feel like then it's like you're walking into their, their world and you're like expecting them to figure out what's going on with your health rather than you sharing what your gut instincts are telling you or the experiences that you're feeling with your symptoms. So, so yeah, that's why it's important for us to be have a good understanding of our bodies and how our bodies function and and understand what is normal and what is not normal you know and obviously it's not something we don't expect everybody to understand every little in and out of their body functions but hopefully through these types of um, episodes or through just even getting a little bits here off of um, TikTok or Instagram or things like that that you'll get enough information to go wait a second I I'm dealing with that that sounds very familiar to me that's not normal. I didn't know that. Okay. I need to look into this a little bit more. I'm going to ask my doctor. I'm going to ask my pharmacist a little bit more about this. And if this is something that he or she feels like could be the case for me. And I think, yeah, I, it's all just about the communication, right? Well, and confidence. And confidence. Like for real, you should walk in there saying, this mm. is what I think. This is what I want. And you should feel confident. Yeah. That's okay to ask for. Yeah. You sh- you've got to understand in that room, you are the superstar. Like That's right. it's, it's your, it's you. So if you like what you're hearing, great. If you don't, it's the reason why there's 15 other doctors to go see or a nutritionist or whoever you want right. to. Mm-hmm. So if you can give anyone the tiniest amount of confidence that it's their health, what happens at that point is their whole brain like almost explodes. They're like, wait a minute, I don't have to just do what I'm told. Yeah. And it's amazing to see even just the feeling of control to saying, oh, I finally have a little control. Nothing's mm-hmm. different in their life, but they feel like they have control. Their their outlook changes like overnight. And it's mm-hmm. so if I can say, hey, you just tell doctor no, like it's it's okay to do that. Their mm-hmm. finger doesn't isn't any longer when they shake their yeah. finger. Just just say, nah, I, I'm gonna go someplace else or I'm gonna do, or you can say, okay, I want you to explain that to me before I just take this pill. I think it's great. I know people are smart. We are, we're smart. And I, we, nobody understands us or our health better than we do. Right. And so, right. yeah. I, okay. I know. I feel like I preach this so many times, but I don't think I can preach it enough because I do think it's something that's been missing for a lot of years. And as I've been working my practice for over, I don't even know where I'm at now, uh, 20, over 25 years, this is something that has been a struggle. And I have found actually when people go in and they have that confidence that you're talking about and they decide that they're taking control of it that in and of itself is some of the best medicine. Absolutely. Like it really does turn things around for him. I know it's my stomach. Well, mm-hmm. it looks like this. No, I told you it's my stomach. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's deal with your stomach then. Like that's all it takes. Like yeah. it's cool and I think it's great. So just remember, people are smart. Like I, people are really smart. So We're smarter than we think. Absolutely. We're smarter than maybe we think or get credit for maybe. I don't know. But yeah, yeah, I love it. That's so good. <laughs> well, what a great way to start this episode because- <laughs> You're speaking our language. This is exactly what we love to talk about here on the show. But um, but yeah, I just think that's so interesting. I think that's a really great. I think so many times when we professionals go into the health and wellness world, so much of it, it comes from like a personal experience too, something that we've like had an experience with, something we've learned. And then it's like we want to then be that person that can help others, you know, to be able to kind of have a little shorter road, maybe, or make it a little easier path, you know, whatever it is. But that's awesome that. This has been something that you found to do. Well, and the worst thing is, so I'm going to jump into the the little bit of the MTHFR stuff because Great. a lot of this came from, so when we, we couldn't have kids, like we got married and there we are, uh, just a menace to the world because we were, I was at the time a full 22 and a half and my wife was almost 20. We had no children in Utah County. Wow. So, okay. <laughs> menaces, like we are missing the boat. Which I have a whole nother opinion. So if we ever want to dive into all that That's stuff, we go another episode. day. But <laughs> yeah. We go to a doctor and, and you know, they go and they say, well, this is an idiopathic um, infertility. And you're like, wow, that sounds super cool. <laughs> yeah. Idiopathic, what a great word, you know? And so you're like, oh, it's idiopathic. And then I'm looking, I'm like, wait, that means we know nothing. They know nothing. They're just guessing, Yeah, you know? <laughs> and so, and so it got so frustrating with infertility. I, it's funny because until you don't, until you want kids, mm-hmm. it, they don't matter. But the second you feel like it's time, right? Like it's it's a devastating, it's super devastating. Like it you is. know, and so 
And so where we moved with this is we went and we originally went to one doctor in Springville. And then he took us uh, to another guy um, who was at the time an American four. This uh, Dr. Richards there in American Fork at the time. And we we went through all the clomid cycles and we started messing with birth controls and we took all the tests, which by the way, there's not one test in infertility that's not completely humili- humiliating. Like, right. It's honestly, true. Like, it's so true. They send either you or your wife into a room and you come out like shamed almost. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, sure. Oh, here's my cup. Well, don't, <laughs> okay, don't, let's don't, get out of don't, here. Don't, yeah. don't, don't make eye contact. I'm like, no, don't look at me. Don't look at me. So, you know, you walk out of the room and, and so then as I started studying, we found out that my wife actually couldn't process her full of gas. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then we found out her family all had the same issue. And then we started looking and they're like, well, now you have a 1.3% chance. Uh, you're, you're 30% higher to have strokes and heart attacks. And so we started treating my wife. Well, I mean, my oldest is now 21. So this was 21 years ago. We started treating right. my wife, but the understanding of the methylation process and why it's important was really misunderstood because there was a guy in California that was teaching us. And then I'd come back and talk to the doctors here and they had no clue. And they all thought it was mm-hmm. hokum. Yeah, I know. This is so true. Keep talking though. This is great. I want to know. <laughs> so, so you have to understand the way that medicine works inside the United States is it's evidence-based medicine. And I hate it. Mm-hmm. Because what it requires is 10 to 20 years worth of data that's been repeatable in order for that to become anything that becomes useful in practice. So even right now on the CDC's page, if you look at the methylated cyanocobalamin or the methylated folic acid, they're saying, well, we can't tell you to use it because there's no good studies. Mm-hmm. Yep. And But they do have good studies that show if you take too much folic acid, that your homocysteine level will go higher because you can't process it. And they do know that homocysteine is bad for you. And so I'm reading this, like last night I'm reading it because obviously you don't want to stumble over your words. And I'm reading, I'm like, this is so ridiculous. You know that if you take too much folic acid, which you're telling people to take when they're pregnant, Mm -hmm. which you have to because tubal defects are folic acid-based. Exactly. Like They're folate based They're They're always folate based They're folate deficiency based. Yes. Always. And so Mm -hmm. they say, well, we have good evidence that shows if we take 400 micrograms of folic acid, we reduce Mm -hmm. those numbers. So that's the only thing we're going to say. Right. But we also know that 16% of the population can't do anything with the folate, but we can't tell you to take any of these other products because we don't have the studies that we need for 15 years. Mm -hmm. And it's so counterintuitive. Like it's just so counterintuitive in nature. Because you know that this is occurring, but because you don't have the study, you're going to say, oh, we're Mm -hmm. going to call it, we're going to call it not based. So we're going to like actually put a negative spin on this. Yeah, it's frustrating. Yeah. And and then you're like, okay, so what if you did take it? Well, nothing. Like nothing happens if you take it, you don't need it. Nothing. So Mm -hmm. you know that homocysteine gets too high, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. You know that 16% of the population isn't making the proper type of folic acid, uh, folate. They're Mm -hmm. just, we know it. You know, there's no risk in taking methylated folate, but you still won't say it because evidence-based medicine has to come before we say anything. It's so true. So, oh. so it's just, it's frustrating because I'm like, well, what, what do you think? When people ask me, I'm like, well, just take them both. You'll just, you'll just pee out the, the methylated folate if you don't need it. What difference does it make? It's just more urine. I mean, and if, if we're right, tubal defects will go down. And in 15 right. years, there'll be a, a breaking study out there that'll say, what nutritionists have been saying for what 30 years at least <laughs> i mean i know for me <laughs> it'll be at the least study. that long yeah somebody will put it out there as wow look at this great information and and like the whole nutritionist group will all roll their eyes at once you'll hear it roll across the nation because they already know it <laughs> i think it will start like an earthquake or something i don't know what will right happen like, <laughs> yeah and by then it'll be so old news because yeah. Because it'll move to where you're taking some folic acid and some methylated folic acid, because why not? Already in common practice in every place except for the Harvard study or whatever one it does, like finally be able to take yeah. credit for it. Yeah. I mean, studies can be great, but I'm I'm with you on all of that. Um, I feel like it's frustrating because it's very confusing. Um, you know, with mixers, we have a, a multivitamin and we also have a pre and postnatal. 
And for me, it was very important for us to deliver methylated fully in these different supplements, because like you're saying, um, it's actually almost half the population now that they're doing all of these genetic tests and things, it's becoming more like people are becoming more aware of this gene mutation and that there's, you know, reasons why people aren't able to convert or methylize, you know? And so, um, so yeah, so we're like, we need to be able to give them these, uh, B vitamins that they can actually utilize. And in doing so, it's going to help to prevent neural tube defects. It's going to also help what we've been finding is it's helping to reduce like morning sickness in women. Um, and it's just overall just helping women to be able to function better and to be able to feel better because there's so many symptoms that are also associated with it. But we get a lot of um, people on our social medias. Um, you can call them trolls, but I think it's more just that they are so confused. They're just getting all of this different information. They're very much invested in what it is that the CDC is saying or whatever and and not understanding, like, use your common sense. Use your common sense. Where does folate come from? Don't you love trolls? I actually like them because, okay, so we came from a time where I'd walk through the high school and there'd be an argument between Mm -hmm. which was better Ford or Chevy. Right. And they would be, they would be so heated Mm -hmm. on whether it was the Lakers or the Jazz that they would be at each other's throats and then they'd stop and they'd walk down the hall with each other because argument was over. There wasn't this, you didn't have to like hate a person because you disagreed with them. And, and in the end, you'd see every now and then somebody would move from Ford to Chevy or Chevy to Ford because of the conversation. And it was fine because mm-hmm. right afterwards, you'd go get your Granny B's pink cookie and you'd eat it together. Fine. People that live outside of Utah are like, what are what you talking about? Talking? But I'm following you. I know exactly. Right? Yes. I mean, it's, but they have their own Granny B's cookie, whatever it is. You know what I mean? Because wherever <laughs> yes. I travel, I have to eat it. But you would be able to argue and it would be fine. And it wasn't like, oh, I disagree with you on one thing. Yeah. Now I have to hate you. In fact, right. you disagreed with everybody all the time. And then the next second, you were you were best friends with them because you learned from them. And so I have really no problem with with trolls in general, yeah. like as they're called, because I think most people are just expressing opinions. And I think that if I could sit, I have one guy, um, that one doctor back in Pennsylvania. I want to fly out there so bad because he every time I say anything, he's got a counter to it. Mm-hmm. But, we're snipping at each other in 15 seconds. I want to go mm-hmm. take him to dinner. I bet you he and I would get along. Because he's a new speaks. best friend. Yes. Because he would say something like, okay, well, I get that part, but what happens when you look? Like, for example, the European study is now saying it's 50% of these mutations, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the CDC is now coming out and saying, well, you've got the different types of mutations. You've got the CC, the CT, you've got the TT, then now you've got the P, and then you actually have some men who overmethylate, and that causes a decrease in sperm count. Right, right, right. Like that. So now there's like even the CDC in the last few months have just added new. And if I were to sit down with them and say, okay, so what you're thinking is if they're a CC or a CT, we don't need to do that. But if they're a TT, they do. And you'll say yes. And I'll say, okay, that's fine. But how do we know if you're a TT without spending, what, $700 to find out your mutation? Why don't I just mm-hmm. give it to them? And they're like, well, I guess we, we would have a good conversation. Right. But. Yeah, it's taking the conversation just a little bit further. And that's why I guess I, I didn't mean to be like offensive if I, if I said, just use common sense. But that's what I'm meaning, Philip. Exactly what you're saying right there. It's just like, use the common sense, you know, and and trust trust your gut it, more than anything. You know, I just feel like science will eventually catch up with this. I feel like it's being talked more about. Um, and it's really important for us to kind of understand this because I feel like um, this gene mutation actually is affecting us in ways that we don't realize with infertility. That's a big one. There's a lot hair. of other reasons. Hair. Yeah. Hair. hair Depression. Hair yeah. Different. Yeah. How many, how many women? Okay. So I've, I've come to the realization that there are, a woman would rather lose an arm than lose her hair. Yeah. But like for real, probably, and <laughs> probably a leg and three toes from the other side before they want to lose it. Like yeah. hair is like devastating to them. Well, mm-hmm. if you've got the mutation to where you're not moving folate to mm-hmm. methylated tetrahydrofolate. If you can't do that, if that reductase, the, the methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase isn't working, mm-hmm. you don't, you'll never have that thick hair come back. And then if you start looking at babies who, okay, so babies are big old parasites. I, I've got four of them. I love my parasites, but they suck everything that you had stored up from when you were younger and it's, you are depleted. Yes. And it's not like you can like say, well, now I'm now the baby's gone, I'll be fine. No, that took you 17 years to have mm-hmm. enough in there. And now you think a year's gonna do it? No. Nope. So 
So their hair keeps falling out. And if, if you can't, if you can't turn folate into a methylfolate and that mm-hmm. folate doesn't change homocysteine to methionine and that methionine along with, I think there's, there's so many things that that one reductase it, the yeah. enzyme does. So this enzyme, yeah. the machine, it's not like it does one thing. They don't even know everything it does. They exactly. just know it's, it's essential to move homocysteine to methionine and then they quit. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. If it's that essential, what else is it doing? Right. And so you look at that and then women's hair starts falling out and they start getting shampoos and then they get, Mm -hmm. you're like, well, have you even tried a methylated folate? Have you tried methylated B12? But they don't even know to think to try it. They, that's not something that they've been told. Yeah. And they're like, well, I take a one city vitamin. I'm like, okay. And then you're, you're starting over saying there's a chance you just Mm -hmm. put out there. There's depending on whether you want to look at the European union or ours, there's a 16% that will go lowest number just in case. Let's okay. say 16. I know 50 is out there. Let's say 16. Okay. If 16% of the time, the reason why your hair is falling out is because you're not taking methylated folate. I can convince 100% of women whose hair are falling out to take a methylated folate because they didn't yes. even realize their, met, their vitamin may be useless. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I know. There's so many things. I, I, I'm worrying a little bit because we're just diving into it because this is super fun. And you and I like yeah. are understanding exactly yeah, we probably what jumped. we're talking yeah. about. Let's yeah. go back just a teeny bit and let's just even explain what does it, what does having an MTHFR mutation even mean? So, so in the genetics, the genetics the, inside of us, they tell us to create different enzymes. Enzymes mm-hmm. move one chemical to another chemical, tiny factories inside of us. Um, this is a reductase. So it, it actually changes the electron configuration to it. That's what it does. And so we can get large amounts of certain substances like homocysteine from our diet all the time. Mm-hmm. But in certain areas, as we came through, whether you believe in evolution or God, either way, we've moved from one place to another. Right. As we moved through, there wasn't enough of methionine in our diet. There wasn't enough of certain things. So our body said, the people who can make more methionine are going to have more babies and that's going to create mm-hmm. more population that way. So you had a whole group of people who started to do really well. And then those who couldn't create methionines, their genetic basis started to to taper off. Mm -hmm. And then came modern medicine where we get to save everybody and everybody's life. And and so you're seeing women that used to die in childbirth because of blood Mm -hmm. clots. They don't die anymore. Mm -hmm. And then they have another generation and then they have another generation. So these genes that normally, because the diet would have weeded them out, no longer happens. So right. now we have this huge dis- diversity of individuals over the last 200 years that would have never been there 200 years earlier. And what these people can do is they can't move and make what is in their diet useful. Right. And so that's perfect. Mm-hmm. And we can keep these people adequate. I think that's the right word. Like they're, they have enough energy, but they're sure. not great. They can, but they, yeah, adequate. but they're not functioning as well as they could be. No. And, and then we, t- we tell them, oh, you know, you have this baby mm-hmm. and you're already feeling like garbage. But when you're pregnant, they're like, oh, well, I feel like garbage because I'm pregnant. And you come out the other side. It's like, I still feel sad. I still feel, I feel like there's something wrong with me. And you start looking at the fact that you, to make serotonin, you need more estrogen or your estrogen just stove. But in order to change that, you actually need all of the rubbed up tastes that are out there. And so they come in and the doctor's like, well, here's your sertraline. Here's your escitalopram. You were mm-hmm. never depressed before, but. And I don't disagree with that. I think people should take those medicines, but you also should say now, functionally, mm-hmm. can we fix this rather than yeah. put you on a pill forever? Now, let's look I for take, the root cause. Let's right. find the root cause. Yeah. I take an antidepressant. I take I take Lexapro because mm-hmm. my life sucks most days. Like I have to be at work for 17 hours. Like if yeah. I could change my lifestyle, it would be different. So anybody who's taking it, you have to understand I'm on your team, mm-hmm. but I also look at it and say, okay, well, I eat like garbage. I, I honestly, there's no way that I'm getting the uh, sleep that I need right. and all these other things. And so I start working from a, you know, a more holistic side because mm-hmm. I believe that the day that the right and the left, that the blue and the red, that, that the holistic and then if the day that we decide that conflict is the biggest waste of energy and time, mm-hmm. people will be fine. So I'm coming back around because yes. I don't want anybody to stop their antidepressant over this, but I right. like to start taking mm-hmm. And see, well, can I fix the root cause and taper off of it? Because right. I hate mine. Bring them I hate both together. Right. right. I hate it. I hate it. But, but I it's have to helping take it. you in the right. meantime while yeah. you're also addressing the root cause. 
right. while you're understanding why in the first place you might be predisposed to be depressed at this time. You're understanding right. there's lifestyle things that can happen. There's nutritional things that can happen. But in the meantime, you know, there's, there is amazing pharmaceutical drugs that are out there that can help us, but they're not the end all be all. No, they're, they're, they're just, band-aids. They're band-aids. They're, band-aids. Of, they're yes. all band-aids. Like everything we do in the pharmaceutical industry would be a band-aid if we could fix the root cause. There's some root causes we can't fix. Like mm-hmm. you have a brain injury, I'm just going to have to help you forever. Right? right, right. But if you were fine and then you got pregnant and then you got depleted, mm-hmm. so what meaning that your body over time had figured a way to make it through from zero to 18, 22. And if you're not in Utah, like closer to 27, but we'll still speak to the 19 year olds here in Utah anyway. But you, you, once you've depleted in order to get those storages back up, it takes a long time. And your processes, as you get older, slow down. Your factory mm-hmm. workers, they all want to go home earlier. They're all tired. Their backs hurt. So all these little enzymes we have, they just start slowing down anyway. Mm-hmm. Right. So nutrition, people are like, well, I was fine and tell. I'm like, well, of course you were. And your back didn't hurt. Your feet didn't hurt. And mm-hmm. when you got out of bed, you could stand upright right when you got out of bed and not 10 minutes <laughs> later. Jump right out. Yeah. So, you know, that's the same thing. So you find people who start processing less and less too. Mm -hmm. And even if it's just one out of five people that have this problem, Mm -hmm. it should be a big deal. Because in those factories, if you can't put out that extra methyl group, so it's like like a little ball of power on the end of of folic acid. And then that folate, it's the best friend to everybody. It's it's the ultimate giver. It's a people pleaser to say the least. So everybody who needs a little help, it goes and gives it to. Yes. And it's the only one that will go through the work to go to the factory to pick up the methyl group. Nobody else is going to do the work. Your B12 is not going to do the work. You're you're even fixing your own genetics isn't your own DNA is not going to work. Transferring processes to make dopamine, serotonin. None of those guys, dopamine sec, they're not going to the factory. They're way too good for that. They only shop at at the name brand. They don't go to the outlets. And so they go and they so the only one that'll do that is folic acid, who will always make the run for everybody. So they run and get the stuff. And when you can't do that, all of those processes are missing its little ball of energy. It's got oh, no energy. power. And yes. that's what it does. And mm-hmm. so it's so I always, and then people say, well, what if I take it and I don't eat it? Really mm-hmm. nothing. They can't, it's not going to harm you. It's not going to harm you. So right. I agree. I agree with that. And thank you for it. That was a perfect way of explaining that. I think that we're getting the picture of the gift that keeps on giving that, that little factory worker, the ball, what did you say? The, ball, <laughs> the little the, ball of energy. That's the ball the, of energy. It's the one going that. to get the caffeine shot for everybody. It's the one that does the drink runs. So, and so we don't even need a caffeine shot, right? That's, that's exactly right. It's doing right? it inside. It's not caffeine, yeah. but it's the one that will, it's the friend that'll always go get you what you need. So that's the, fr- we all need that kind of friend for sure. And yeah. And I think we do live in a society where it is kind of like, Oh, it's normal. Of course we're all tired. We all need that caffeine in the morning. We all are running, you know, ragged. Yeah. And so we, we don't really pay attention to like, I'm not feeling as well, or it's blamed on old age, but which is somewhat true, but I feel like we just kind of accept it too soon. And we don't know that we can actually do something about it. Um, you talked a little bit before about how it can be very expensive to go and get a test to see if you have this gene mutation and which type of the gene mutation that you have and all of that. Um, but I, I think it's interesting to share just some little signs that actually we do know there's some, um, consistent signs that you can see on your body or your little baby's body that can kind of give you some clues that you possibly have this gene mutation. And if you see these things, then it can get you kind of going down that road. And maybe it would be where, I mean, I always think it's worth it to know as much about your body as possible, but it might give you a little more reason to then go and do this type of testing. For instance, um, it's something that I have. It's something my husband has. And then both of our children have this gene mutation and um, something that we have physically that every single one of us um, experiences as a baby is we have the little birthmark on the back of our neck called an angel's kiss. See, I didn't know this. So I'm learning from you. So yeah. That's a sign. That's a possible sign that you have this gene mutation. The other thing is sometimes you'll have a little mark on your um, forehead, also called an angel's kiss, which I think is so cute. That's adorable. I just saw one. I just saw a baby that had it yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. It'll usually fade away, but that's a good sign. The other thing is that um, now I'm forgetting what it's called, but the tie under our tongue, you know, the frenula. Thank you. It is too far forward. So you'll have a lot of times the doctors don't even explain why they're doing this, but they'll go in and snip it. 
I remember yeah. they did that to my son and I was like, wait, what are you doing? Right. They just went and snipped it because he had that. And so at the time I didn't understand the MTHFR gene mutation. I didn't understand any of that. But as I started going through school and learning and then becoming you know, more aware of this, I started recognizing that there was a lot of these signs that um, physically you could see that uh, pointed me in the right direction. And, you know, at the time, this was years ago, my, my kids are 30 and 28. So this is a long time ago, but, um, you know, it, it made me as a mom be more aware of how important it was for them to spread out vaccination vaccinations. Right. It also helped me to understand that like medicine can be used, but we need to be like careful about how we are administering, administering the medication and the timing of things as well. So having this kind of information is valuable and it's something that, um, it is, it's accessible to all of us now. And so it is. And and just having go look, say, okay, I think I might. Well, if you talk to the European Union, you're one out of two people. So look around the room. Mm -hmm. According to them, it's one out of two. Right. Yeah. And and the numbers from other, you know, if you look at other racial backgrounds, it's higher in some of the other, some of the other racial backgrounds. It's just the European Union's the way that they've tested it. So, so, uh, you know, you start thinking, well, do I have it? Research and time. I promise we'll pay off for these individuals. Like there's, this mm-hmm. isn't, this isn't going to be one of those, those death scrolls that you wish you hadn't wasted 20 minutes on. You'll, you'll learn so much so fast now. Yeah, absolutely. But let's say you don't have, or you haven't noticed any of those signs, then we've kind of talked about some of the symptoms that are most commonly associated with MTHFR um, gene mutation. So we talked about chronic fatigue. We've talked about depression. We've talked about infertility. What are uh, some of the ta- others? You got to look at any metabolism type issues too, because mm-hmm. you won't, you're not going to produce, if you're really struggling to have what, to produce enough to, to where you're, you're dragging, you don't have energy, you're, you're not losing weight. Yeah. You look at those, I, you know, and then you start looking at the thyroid function that ties into it too. Mm-hmm. So now you're chronically cold, you're chronically, like you sleep too much, but you feel like you're not rested when you wake up, like all of those, all of those could easily be tied in to some degree or another to it as well. Mm-hmm. I think so too. What there's else am I missing? Of... I know no, you got a couple. More. There's no, so there's, many. So. There's so many. I, this list won't be exhaustive for sure. But, um, you know, like we've talked about the depression and anxiety, but a lot of mental disorders are even linking oh, yeah. it to a predisposition to Alzheimer's. Um, ADHD. ADHD, me- brain fog, just brain fog, brain in, fog general, in general. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, there's just a lot of symptoms. Well, and chronically being sick all the time. So, yeah. you know, that, you know, your methionine is so important in the immune system. So, if, you yeah. know, you catch every cold that comes past. That's a good sign that your immune system's not mm-hmm. getting their little ball of energy from the guy that delivers it from the factory. Like, you, yes. it's a good sign because that anything that takes a lot of, to process, a lot of energy, they're going to be the first ones to shut down. And yeah. so... I, a lot of people say, well, I always get sick or I get sicker than everybody else. Mm-hmm. That's a key sign for me too, because your immune system yeah. won't function properly for yeah. sure. It's true. You'll have somebody that catches a virus. Right. Some of them is no big deal. Others are hospitalized. Right. And that's something I've been seeing and finding too, is that it is often linked to this gene mutation. So it's interesting. I think we're making it sound like everything is associated with this gene mutation, but it is something that there are many things that we haven't maybe considered that um, that could be linked to it. And there's something easy that we can do. We can just start adding, yeah. right? More Easy is the term, right? <laughs> well, that's the whole thing is it doesn't have to be complicated. And I liked what you talked about at the beginning. You talked about, you know, literally supplementing, putting it into your body is not going to do harm and it could do a whole lot of good. And it's not that expensive. It's not... No. You know, I have somebody come in who's struggled for years uh, that that has been on two thousand dollar medication. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm like, well, let's get you a thirteen or an eighteen or a twenty two dollar bottle of stuff, and let's just see how you're doing. Like, I think, yeah. and they'll come back and they said they'll say, I they'll be buying it again, which is the true sign. And yeah. they're like, I think it's helping. Yeah. And it's funny to me think, okay, so we spent two grand for four years, and yeah. not one person said, could you use this? Right. And that's for me, that's an interesting. We move so fast down the train. You know, you have somebody coming who's not feeling well, who's a little bit down, who's got some depression issues, who's got no energy, and then we put them on thyroid medication, then we put them on antidepressant. Next thing you know, they've got eight medications 
Right. And they're coming to me and say, well, what should I do? And I'm looking at it and like, it makes you tired just looking at their list. I'm like, I don't even know where to start with this thing. Mm -hmm. And so that's, it's, it's one of those things that I always look at and say, well, what harm could we do? And could we get you off something else by doing this? Mm -hmm. And I think it's great. And like you said, it, it looks like it's all inclusive because it's so easy, so low risk and so underutilized. Yep. 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 I agree. <laughs> totally. So yeah, I mean, getting it in itself. I mean, obviously, ideally, we want to have a good diet. People always ask me, right. what's, the, what's the perfect diet? And it's because it's a little complicated. It's not like all of us are the exact same, you know, even if we do have this gene mutation. But I always tell people that the biggest thing that you want to do is think about reducing inflammation, right? That is right. the big... That's the type of diet that's going to affect you the best. When you can reduce that oxidative stress on your body, you're going to be able to benefit and feel great. But then I also recommend that they supplement with methylated B vitamins. And so, because they're, they will feel so much better. They'll get the folic acid naturally, right? right? Okay. Absolutely. But okay. I'm not eating kale. Like I'm just not doing it. Like not I, a lot I'm, of people love that. Yeah. I'm, I'm not eating kale. And to be honest, most of your other green leafy, I have to remember to do it because it's just not as delicious. Now, if I was yeah. good, I would be better at all this stuff, but I know me and I know I'm not going to. So if yeah. you could do it, I would be a hundred percent on board. But if you can't, this is a good second place option for those of us who know pop tarts come so before funny. kale. So unfortunately. Yes. Food is medicine. I'm always going to be like that kale, that spinach, those collard greens. They're great. Oh, and they're there's so great. lots of things you can do to make them more enjoyable. But um, you're right. The majority of the population does not eat enough. And in fact, that is what led to the um, folic acid or folate deficiency problem that they started noticing in the early 60s. That's where folic acid actually became a thing. And what started to be promoted was because people started to, or they stopped eating from their gardens. They stopped eating these leafy greens, which was, you know, a staple for most people, um, you know, through history. And then they stopped eating it because they were eating more processed foods. And then they started noticing this increase in um, neural tube defects and, you know, things like that. And so they started connecting dots and realizing that this is what's connected. So they created folic acid to be able to be put into, into fortified foods and to put into supplements and things like that um, to help address this problem, but it does in a way, but then it also is, it can end up being a problem for those of us that have the MTHFR gene mutation. You need to make sure that you're getting a methylated version of it, right? Absolutely. Like okay. you can't, you can't get that from food anyway. And but I, I'm with you hundred percent. Food is the answer, but if you know yourself <laughs> and you know that it's not going to happen and it's and and particularly even if you started like the methylated version is you can't it's almost impossible to get enough from your food anyway it's almost it is that's true it would, it would take you 16 years to replenish after each baby like it would mm -hmm. take a long time you could do it but you're not going to i guarantee you're not going to do what it takes to do that like there's nobody, just too many things and too many ways that we're being depleted anyways Right. Just the They're, amount of stress that we're dealing with, that in and of itself depletes us a lot. Yeah. Well, and what's required of a person right. throughout a day. Like right. the, what we get accomplished throughout a day. I mean, you know, you can't you can't expect it to happen. So it's it's important for you to take control of where you can take control. Exactly. In every aspect, and it will lead to more good decisions. You're yeah. never going to start eating correctly if you don't feel a little bit better and start moving. And you're not going to move if you don't have the right nutrition in you anyway. So it's each one of them's baby steps. Yep. If you think you'll wake up tomorrow and change everything you're doing, you're obviously not 48 years old like me. Like I know everything's one step at a time. And that's the reason why this or any of the other stuff we talk about is so important that you learn on your own mm -hmm. and you understand what my next step is. Yes, I'm going to get to a point where I'll eat his collard greens. I'm getting there, but okay. that's that's down the road a few years. So you need some her greens. We'll get her greens. Her here. greens, her greens and less pop tarts is where we'll start. Less, that's your beginning we'll start step. because yes. I know I could reduce from three pop tarts to two and eat some her greens. But I'd like to get to a point where I have a garden, which would mean I'd have to have some time off, you know? So we're all headed the right way. And it's all about yes. being educated and feeling comfortable walking and say, before I start this new medication, is there something I can do that gives me control? And I think that's, I love it when people come and say, I've learned like, there's two things about my, 
when people watch, you know, my, my TikToks or my, my Instagram stuff, first I ask them, is it fun? And then second, did I teach you something that you didn't necessarily know you even needed to know? And they always say yes. And those are the two things that make you feel useful. Because in the end, if it's not fun, they're not going to watch. But mm -hmm. they're walking out and they're like, yeah, I've been in like, I had a, I had a friend that she, she actually helps me now. Her name's Allie and she's super sweet. She's helped me for about the last two months. Because I've been in rooms before where they're teaching each other things that you taught them. And I just sit there and listen to them. They don't yeah. even know that I work with you. And that's, that's where I want everybody to get to where yeah. they're teaching people. Because then we're, yeah. we're together. Like I'm, I'm done with the separated stuff. I'm done with mm -hmm. the fighting. So I'm with you on this. I always say on this show, this show, that everyone that's listening is so tired of me saying this and I just need to wear a t-shirt from now on. But sharing is caring, right? That's the yeah. whole reason that we learn these things. If we learn things that are helpful, then it's our next step is to share. And then when you learn something that's helpful, you want to share it. So that's what I love that you're doing so often and you're giving good, like easy to share tidbits that get people the information that they need and then the inspiration that they need to look into it a little deeper. I love that women that come in or men, we have men that listen to this show too, but the people that come and listen to this show, then they share it with their girlfriend, their moms, their sisters, their whoever. It's a way for us to continue to help us come together and as a whole become healthier. And so, yeah, this has been a super fun um, conversation. I know you have a, uh, you've got at least 16 more hours of your work day left, right? I think, I think 12, but yeah, 12, we're okay. yeah that's it. <laughs> so I should probably <laughs> let you get back to that, but thank you so much, Philip. All of this was so fascinating. No, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's so much fun to come on here and I'll get to learn too, because now I know what the angel kiss is on the back. Of the you know neck, what the so. angel kiss means. I didn't know it before. I do now though. So I know, right? So fun. So fun. Yeah. Well, I've loved it. I've loved this conversation. I encourage all of you girls that are listening to the show to go in and follow, follow Philip, Phil the pharmacist, right? That's me, Phil the I'll, pharmacist. So. I'll link all of your, um, your Instagram and your TikTok, your social media, but is there like any other ways that people can connect with you? You know, we do have a store here in Logan that, that you can come see us, but right now, and then we're on YouTube as well, but the best way is probably on Instagram, TikTok, and, and the, the social medias. That's, that's where we're mainly at right now. And it's just been a lot of fun. Like it's been quite the ride. It's, you know, I started 18 months ago, so this amazing. is, I have no idea what to do with it all. So. Well, you're doing an amazing job. I'm always super impressed whenever I see what you put out there. And I know the time and work that put, you're putting in behind the scenes. But it's making a difference. And obviously, just if this has only been going on for 18 months, that just shows that there is a hunger for this kind of information, this kind of education. So keep it up. Keep doing what you're doing. And I'm, we're going to all get connected with you, all of the audience that um, tunes into this show, because we just all want to be one big, happy, healthy community. I'm with you. Thank yep. you so much. This has been so much fun. Thank you so much. All right, girls. Till next time. Hope you have a ha happy and healthy week. And... Can't wait to hear all of your comments in our Mixers Girls community. Just go ahead and um, join. If you're not there yet, you can join on our app or you can join on our website. Just go to the community link. And that's where we continue these types of questions or conversations and where you guys share a lot of your questions. So thanks again. So much fun. We'll talk soon. Bye.